and I am going to read a creepy story that I wrote called The City. I'm perplexed as to why the sun hasn't risen yet. I've been walking through a black rainy night for hours. No stars or moon in the sky. It's dark, freezing, damp. The air is so still it doesn't seem to exist. The only light being offered is coming from the fires that are devouring some of the buildings throughout what seems to be the downtown area of the city that I am in. I am thankful for the light provided by the fires because otherwise I wouldn't be able to see where I'm going as the entire city seems to be without electricity. I have never seen so much arson being committed in one night and it leads me to wonder when the law is ever enforced here. Fires have been burning all night, yet I haven't seen one fire truck or heard any sirens. The pouring rain and the night both allow the fires to burn slower than they would in the heat of the day, so I suppose I can be grateful for that. The air of the city is acidic and heavy with must. How I ended up here, I do not know. I woke up on the sidewalk with no recollection as to who I ever was. I cannot remember my name or my age. As I walk down the sidewalk, I catch a glimpse of myself in the first window I have seen that isn't broken. I am a male and I look to be in my early 50s. I don't know who I ever was, but I do have the sensation of memory with no clarity. And I do still retain all of my earthly knowledge, which leads me to believe that I am experiencing some sort of amnesia. How I have no memory of my own person is beyond me. I hope to God that my memory comes back as I walk down the cracked city sidewalk in search of someone who may be able to help me. The only people I have seen up until now look a lot worse off than I am. All of them lying on the sidewalks, in alleyways, and in the gutters. Some of them are moaning and some lie quietly still, seeming to have accepted their faded despair. As I walk, I see another man walking towards me. The first person I have seen on foot since I awoke from my coma, or whatever it was. He looks feeble and old and keeps his head down. I beckon to him as we approach one another, but he doesn't look up. When he is closer, I ask him if he knows the name of this city. He walks past me without so much as lifting his head, as though I am just another voice in the wind, if there was any wind here. I continue my search for help, examining the buildings that I pass to see if one may be a police station or a hospital. I soon come to realize that none of the buildings have signs or banners stating what they function as. They are all completely blank, not even numbered with addresses. Some innate feeling tells me that I have never hoped in my life for the presence of law enforcement more than now. Right now, I would give anything to see a police cruiser and hop inside it. The officer would give me a ride to the nearest hospital and I would happily oblige to any commands he or she gave me. To my grievance, I begin to believe that this city contains no emergency services or personnel. If it did, there wouldn't be so many fires burning it down. I think to myself that perhaps it is a ghost city, abandoned by all besides the impoverished who didn't have the finances to escape it. I walk for a few more hours until I see a wretched woman sitting on the stairs of a large red brick building with boarded up windows. She has the appearance of a withered old witch and calmly sways herself from side to side as though she is copycatting the ticking arm of a clock that only she can see in front of her. Her calmness is eerie and alien to the environment of the city. I approach her hoping that despite her maniacal demeanor she may be able to give me some answers. Hello there. Do you happen to know the name of this city? I'm lost and I don't know how I ended up here. She keeps her gaze fixed ahead of her as she answers me, her icy blue eyes not breaking contact with whatever she is looking at or dreaming about. Her voice comes out like a storm of echoes, causing me to subconsciously cringe away from her. No soul knows how they end up here. Do you know the name of this city is what I asked? No one knows. Her gaze is locked on whatever she is imagining and I reckon that she won't give me any answers, so I turn away from her and begin to walk away. Only a few of us are searching, most of us are trying to sleep. This bitch is crazy, I think to myself, don't waste your time. I keep walking and ignoring her last words and later regretting my arrogance. She must have been in this city for a very long time considering the knowledge that she has of it. 
My progress, if I had any, is decaying. After a few more hours of walking, the sun still hasn't risen, and the buildings are still burning and haven't even began to crumble down, like dying stars that take a millennia before they are completely burnt up. How the hell am I in this city still, I wonder? Considering the hours I've spent walking, I should have at least reached suburbia. I finally scream out my frustrations to the blackness of the night. What the fuck is this? Where am I? I'm answered by my own echo off the stone walls of the barren buildings that surround me. I scream and cry and yell and shout and throw myself onto the stone steps of a building that came, that came upon my path while I was walking. It seems to have the appearance of an old abandoned church aside from the giant gargoyle-like creature sitting where there should be a cross. Where in hell am I? I saw them to my arm. Who in the hell am I? I weep bitterly on the steps of the church-like building for hours. I wish that I would fall asleep but my body is refusing. I'm strained and tired and all I want is some rest. A voice creeps into my head. No rest for the wicked. It slithers away as quietly as it came. I feel tormented and I continue to weep. Thoughts of myself fled towards me down the steps like raw sewage. Memories, but none of them good. My name doesn't return to me. My age doesn't return to me. Memories of my own mother and family don't even return to me. The only memories coming back are horrible ones. All the sins I've committed return to haunt me. The people I've hurt and killed. The girls have... I know these memories are real and I try to put them out, but they burn through my mind like acid. I cannot rest. I pray for peace, but it doesn't find me. After my failed attempt to get some rest, I force myself back up off the church steps. This time my quest is to find the woman I spoke to earlier. I wish I had kept talking to her because I know that she must have answers. I pray that she is still where I saw her. I hasten my way through the darkness for hours, inhaling the musty acidic air deeper with every step. I suddenly realize that the downpour has been highly acidic this entire time, however it hasn't burned my skin. The realization itself is frightening and I don't want to allow myself to comprehend the perplexity of it. I wish the rain would burn my skin. I arrive back to where I saw the woman and feel relieved to see, to see her still there. She looks exactly as I left her, swaying from side to side with her, with her gaze focused ahead of her. Lady, I need you to tell me where the hell I am. What is this city? Every thought that comes into my head torments me. She gives me no response. I grip onto both her shoulders and look directly into her eyes. Please, I shout to her. And for the first time since I came across her, she looks back at me and finally sees me. Her gaze is convicting, like the sewage of raw memories that cascaded their stench into my tormented mind. Her eyes peer into my soul and tell me what she is going to say before she even says it. Is she another one of the lost souls here, or is she a different entity from the rest of us? This place is a labyrinth of paradoxes with no way of escape. The hell you created for others on earth is the hell you must endure for yourself once you die. Okay, so that's the end of the story. Um, thank you for watching, and goodbye.